Hi friends, my name is Host Eric of Talking with Fence People, and I'm somebody who receives a fair amount of emails. Uh, some of them say really interesting things, like this one. <laughs> I thought I'd share it with you, because I think you'll find it interesting as well. I just started looking at typology a little over a year ago. This, guy, this is from an email from a guy named Chris. I got a BS in psychology in 2000 and was focused mostly on the physiology of dreams and dreaming. I'm not sure how much you've looked at this sort of thing. Not much. But during REM sleep, the limbic system is relatively active while much of the frontal cortex is less active. Less active than what, Chris? Less active than a bee crossed with a beaver? Well, that's pretty much everything is less active than that. Um... Oh, I see. Less active than the limbic system. Gotcha. So one cannot control one's dreams. Of course, the primary sensory areas aren't very active as there is nothing to process. Right? Makes sense. You know, you're not really, you don't have your eyes open, you know, you're not listening. And you may be hearing sounds and you may be incorporating those into your dreams, but you're not really attending explicitly to that. Um... Another area that increases in activity is an area that receives information, quote-unquote. I put this in quotes because information seems to be a magical substance neurons produce and pass around from diverse areas, which sort of makes me think of a holistic view of the world. It's interesting to hear you say that. I, I like that notion. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, we, we tend to think so much about how information exists independently outside of us, but of course... It's a relationship that we have with our environment rather than implicit to our environment. Although it may be, but that's never how we experience it. Um, what is striking about this pattern of activation? Oh, and there are some definite changes in the release of certain neurotransmitters such as serotonin, norepinephrine, and an increase in acetylcholine. The pattern bears some resemblance to what might ex one might expect from an INFP. So I'm assuming this guy's an INFP. Now, during brain development, there are various patterns of activation, including one pattern that eventually turns or morphs into REM sleep. This is an early childhood development, he's saying. Is it possible these cycles of activity to become REM sleep? The one that becomes REM sleep was more active than those that become INFP. So what he's basically saying here is, since INFP brain activity, I guess. Matches what what one sees in REM sleep, then maybe that particular part of REM sleep uh, was more active when the baby was being developed. So this is this basically addressing the question of under why people turn out to be the types they are. One second, real quick. Which you can read ahead if you'd like. I seem to recall the stage two sleep enhances the learning physical skills. It's possible that SE DOMS had more activity in this cycle that will become stage two sleep. What really makes this this thing interesting comes a little later on in the thing. What really makes it, it's like, he's making a really good case here, but putting it together really poorly. <laughs> to be honest, you know, it's like, it's, it's haphazardly slopped all over the place, but he's actually making a really good case. I seem to recall that uh, one interesting physiological feature that might support this idea is that the frontal cortex sends many inhibitory signals to the many parts of the brain, including the limbic system. For example, lobotomies, which sever connections between <coughs> Yeah, it says severe, but he means sever. Sever connections Between the frontal cortex and limbic system seem to show how important the limbic system is for motivation. There are cases of people who have fully intact reasoning skills, such as being able to make plans and understanding outcomes, who are unable to carry out these plans because they have a lack of limbic input. Question, is FI necessary to carry out plans? <clears throat> 
Well, I think some F is necessary to carry out plans. Uh, I think a lot of ENTPs um, rely a lot on on um, FE to motivate themselves. Namely, if they feel like they're going to be embarrassed by not following through on something, then that that makes a big difference. Question is, if I necessary to carry a plan, Phineas Gage, your frontal cortex got impaled, shows, seems to show how important the frontal cortex is in inhibiting certain impulses. He became more vulgar and so on. So physiology does seem to support the idea that feeling and thinking oppose one another. Perhaps in TI or TE DOMs, the frontal cortex can send more inhibitory signals and or in FI, still unsure about FE DOMs, there is less or the limbic system is more robust. Another interesting physiological feature is that sensory information tends not to be so useful for forming memory for events. So I, I've posited before that, um, that the reason we don't remember very early childhood is because of the lack of language. That memory is enabled, empowered by having terms. In, in other words, language is how we compact our experiences into meanings. And meanings are the things we ultimately remember, or that we use as sort of a uh, a codex to access our memories. But regardless, <clears throat> usually it's more complex information higher up the processing ladder, if one wants to think of it that way, that is needed to form long-term memories. So abstract thoughts and ideas can help one remember better. If one one might imagine, if abstract ideas help in memory for events, then. When being used by SI, neurons that process abstract ideas become tied up, so NI and NE can't use them. Thus, SI and SE are opposed to NE and NI. Okay, so what he's getting at here is something that I've, I've read about in socionics before, too, which is what's called locality suppression. Um, it's in the brain, it appears to be the case that when a certain part of the brain activates, parts that are near to that brain, that part of the brain, like right next to it, but aren't that part of the brain go extra down in terms of like energy so if you imagine like when you turn on the, the microwave and the 1500 watt heater and all your lights dim well it's that basically but in your brain so what he's saying here is basically when neurons that process abstract ideas become tied up in NI become tied up so NI and NE can't use them that would be expressing SI SE uh, in other words you can one can imagine attention not only in terms of hours of the day to devote which is what I basically try to measure it in like minutes and hours how many what percentage of your attention is directed via what means of attention um, for how long during the course of a given day I would note that uh, that when it comes to extroverted thinking, one needs to remember it in terms of the actual process of figuring. Extroverted thinking is figuring out something. And uh, so, even if somebody is attaining good impacts via a well thought out system or something, except for the portions of that that include figuring, they aren't really using extroverted thinking. Okay, um, I'm hoping to work on this idea more in the future, but one thing seems clear to me. In order for these systems to function properly, that is to allow one to easily change from one system to another when needed later in life, these systems must take turns activating during development in the womb. So this is the neatest bit of this thing, basically. Interestingly, for infants, REM sleep makes up to 50% of their sleep, which might indicate dreams are more about brain development than memory processing. This might explain why the function alternates between introvert and extrovert. Why the functions alternate between introvert and extrovert. So, I mean, I think the reason the reason the functions alternate, it, like like these are very t these are very t e style explanations, which is to say, there's an attempt to link the the observed phenomena of consciousness to specific physicalities, right? 
Um, I think the reason the functions alternate between introverted and extroverted is because basically you can't you can't be an extroverted intuitor, for example, without it being paired with a deliberation function. In other words, an action, the, the capacity to take action with words requires one to use the dominant tool, a tool function, you know, that uh, some sort of deliberative process. Otherwise, it's too much leap, too little look. I know that's not as sciencey sounding as these answers, but uh, ultimately, you know, there are holistic explanations for identity that had to do with the fundamental incompatibility of two different things, whether it manifests in terms of a certain number of neurons to direct towards a given matter, and if they're tied up in one thing, they're not available for another or whether it expresses as definitionally incompatible, like I'm saying, it's, it should resonate in both planes, ideally, right? So I, I like this email because it talks, it's really presenting ways in which we can, things we could, we could predict and test for. Um, now, this is an interesting thing he says here. It possibly explains why an INFP has F-I-N-E-S-I-T-E and then T-E-S-I-N-E-F-I and then F-E-N-I-S-E-T-I, -E and lastly, T-I-S-E-N-I-F-E. -E. So, I mean, the thing is, an INFP has F-I-N-E-S-I-T-E, -E. and that's, that's what they have as their functions. And because that's their function stack, their relationship with the other functions is defined accordingly. Um... It's not that INFP lastly has T-I-S-E-N-I-F-E. -E. It is that the relationship between an INFP and the cognitive function called introverted thinking is defined by the fact that the INFP is defined by the fact that they're an FI DOM. So TI necessarily links to their ontology in specific and very limited ways. Um from other people's perceptions, from your own perception, in various, from various angles. This is something I want to muse on further, but it could indicate a pattern of changes that occur during brain development, a way for all these systems of the brain to activate. One might imagine the problems one would have if one didn't have a set of dominant functions and inferior functions. If all were equal, the brain might be more likely to lock up somewhat as various systems inhibited one another, or some systems dominated other systems too much. Um, no, it wasn't boring. I mean, yeah, it was boring. I, I'm not going to lie. It was boring, but <laughs> that's not the point, right? It's like, it's it's interesting in the sense that uh, I like I like how you're thinking. And I, I think all of these physicalities may indeed link very much as you indicate here. And what you're saying is consistent with functions, except for this this bit here, where it says it possibly explains why an INFP has all these different things. I don't understand what you're trying to get at there, but everything else is great. So, um, and I, I really like the idea that basically your sleep, which which kinds of sleep overweight as an infant either causes or is linked indelibly to your type development. I like that idea as well. Um, so, thanks for the email. And I might make another email out of... I might... I might, I might make another video out of your other email too.